This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for basic or advanced PCB assembly and prototyping. They have a long list of products and services, including, but not limited to, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and yes, even 3D printing. Step up your prototyping with parts and PCBs from PCBWay. That's PCBWay. PCB prototype the easy way. Hey there, welcome back to This Printed Thing. My name's Mike, and if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I've been using for a long time both a Prusa 3D printer and the Bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printer. Both are great printers, however, I have all but ditched Prusa in favor of Bamboo. In fact, I have purchased three more Bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printers for a total of four that I now run in my print shop. Now, the reason I'm making this video today is because I have actually encountered a problem with one of the AMSs that came with one of my Bamboo X1 Carbons. So for a little bit of backstory, I was starting a print like I always do. I happen to have three colors loaded in the AMS. And when it started loading the first color, I could see the, the spool rolling and filament was moving. However, when I looked at the tube coming out the back of the AMS, there was no filament coming out and it sounded like the filament was just kind of bunching up inside the inner part of the AMS, like down, down in here. And when I took the AMS apart, sure enough, that's what was happening. I took a look at the PTFE tube that was coming off of that AMS input and I'm gonna switch over to my other camera here to show you this. I don't know if you can see this real well, but there was actually a groove, a hole cut through the PTFE tube. In fact, this is the PTFE tube uh, to which I'm referring. Basically what had happened was the filament had poked through the wall of the tube and started bunching up down, down in here. So I have here an AMS. This is not the AMS that had the problem, but I'm gonna use this AMS because I happen to have several AM AMSs uh, with the printers that I bought. I'm gonna use this AMS to show you what it is I did to fix the problem. Now, luckily I happen to have a roll of PTFE tube and from having used the Capricorn tube on previous printers, I had a filament cutter, but if you just go on Amazon and do a search for PTFE cutter, you'll find tools like this in varieties. Um, they're all pretty much the same and they're very inexpensive. So if you need to do this, you'll need one of these tools and you'll need a roll of PTFE tube. You'll also need a two millimeter Allen key similar to this because there are two screws that you'll have to remove to get the, the inner carriage of the AMS out so you can get under it and um, and replace the tubes. And those two screws are right here. here. It's hard to show you this, but it's right here and right here. So I'm gonna take my Allen key and just remove these two screws. So I have the two screws loosened, but I'm not gonna take this out yet because I still have this PTFE tube coming off the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reach in here and there's a tab that the PTFE tube goes through. I push down on it and when I push down on it, I can pull that tube out. Now, I can just lift it very gently. You kind of have to move it around a little bit to, to get it to come out and, and yeah, there we go. And there are two cables that have to be removed. 
or that have to be disconnected. These two here that um, control some of the AMS functions, all you have to do is just gently pull them up and there you go. Now before you flip this over, don't forget that you loosen those two screws and that they're still in there. So what I do is I just kind of gently rotate it and let the screws fall into here while I work on this part. So I'm going to set this aside so that we can focus on this part. Now I'm going to turn it over and on my AMS that failed, it was the third input. So that's going to be this one right here. And what I like to do is I like to take a pair of pliers and kind of push it in here, not to squeeze, but to just push down the button that releases the, the PTFE tube. And you have to kind of push it down on both sides. So you got to basically wrap the, the pliers around the tube without squeezing and just push down. And you also have to be careful with these connections here. Make sure you don't disconnect them by accident, but you just kind of push down with your pliers and then your PTFE tube will come out. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here. This one's a little, a little easier to get to, but you just kind of push down on that and then the tube comes out. And if you look, I don't know how well you can see this, but this one was about to do the same thing. I've had this, this is on the second um, X1 carbon that I bought. So I've had this one for quite some time. And if you can see where it gets really thin here, yeah, this tube was about to do the exact same thing. So now I'm going to put this down for a second. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut another length of PTFE tube to match this. So I'm going to grab my PTFE tube here. And I just kind of match the length. It doesn't have to have to be exact necessarily, but I like to try and make it so as much as I can. So you just fit your tube into the cutter and snip. Once again, compare lengths. And yeah, we're within like half a millimeter difference. So this, this should work just fine. So I'll bring my carriage back up here and I'll take this tube that I just cut and it's pretty simple. You just insert um, I'll usually do this side first and you just kind of push it in. You'll feel it go in and grab, kind of give it a little tug to make sure it's in there snugly and securely. And then do the same thing with this side. And you're done with that. Now I could go ahead and do the same thing with these as well. I'm not going to at this moment because they don't look too worn. Um, and I kind of want to make this video somewhat brief-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Uh, and you basically put it back together the, in the reverse order in which you took it apart. So remember you have your screws, or at least I have my screws in here. So I'm going to grab those out, set them down. And you just kind of set the front of the AMS in. And don't forget you have two cables here to reconnect. So I'm going to do that. And then you just kind of push this back down. The tab takes a little bit of doing to get it out and, and back in. You just got to kind of push it gently and it'll fall into place. So I'm just going to drop my two screws back in. 
and tighten them down. Obviously you don't want to go too tight because you are screwing into plastic. And then I reinsert the PTFE tube, the longer PTFE tube, into the back. I just push it in, it'll go in, give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. And then that's it. So we're ready to reconnect this. So the, now that I've shown you the problem and the solution, there's something else I want to talk about. So this tube that I took out of my printer or out of my AMS, I look at it and the, the outer wall of this tube is really thin compared to what I bought off of Amazon for like 15, $16. But if you haven't had this problem yet with your AMS, chances are you probably will. And you're probably going to need to do something like this to compensate. And I recommend, if you can, using a thicker PTFE tube than what comes stock in the machine. One caveat is when you push the filament down into the, the input, you might have to play with it a little when you push it down down into here just to make sure that it goes into the actually goes into the the tube because what it may end up doing because these walls are thicker what it may end up doing is hitting the uh, the edge of the tube but it's not anything to worry about you just kind of have to play with it a little bit sometimes but what you end up with is a stronger PTFE tube and so my final thought on this is, okay, here's the thing. I followed all of Bamboo's rules with the AMS. They said not to run abrasives in it because that can wear out your parts. Well, guess what? I didn't run abrasives and my parts wore out anyway. So that begs the question, why don't we go ahead and just run abrasives in the AMS. So that's exactly what I've done. For the last two months or so, I've run wood filaments, marble filaments, matte filaments, uh, any anything that would be considered abrasive um, that would wear out the AMS parts. And I haven't had any problems other than this happening, which was going to happen anyway. Now I'm not, gonna say just disregard everything bamboo says um, disclaimer I am NOT telling you to to run abrasives in your machine necessarily however I mean you make the decision yourself if this is gonna happen anyway again you make the decision but I want to know your thoughts. Leave a comment below and tell me what you think. But that's it for this video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you found this video in any way, shape, or form helpful, then please like, and also consider subscribing. And, as always, go out there, fire up those 3D printers, and make something awesome.